you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast, the hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show. Dot com. Hey, we're coming to another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you tuning in, being a part of the podcast. It's like you're part of a giant family that loves you, that hugs you, that doesn't judge you because I can't see you and I really don't know you. But still, there's no judging. And isn't that nice to have a family just like that? That's why you subscribe to the Chris Voss Show podcast and you tell all your friends, neighbors, relatives to subscribe as well. You just grab their phone, sign them up. Get them listen to the podcast, and everyone's good to go because it's a giant loving family. Anyway, guys, we certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, to see the video version of this, uh, go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Foss. Go to uh, LinkedIn forward slash uh, The Chris Foss Show. Facebook, The Chris Foss Show. Uh, goodreads.com uh, forward slash Chris Foss. And, uh, of course, Instagram. You can find us on both Chris Foss and The Chris Foss Show. Uh, I've been profiling a lot of different really cool and interesting people that have been meeting on the new clubhouse app in fact uh, many times we've been broadcasting live on the clubhouse app follow me over there at chris voss and i'm sure the at chris voss show will be on us soon as well uh but what i'd like you to do is check out some of the people that we've been interviewing and follow them as well today we have a professional comedian not an amateur comedian i'm kind of somewhere in like an amateur or below amateur level comedian uh but we have a professional comedian who's actually funny and probably fun much funnier than i am so i'm i'm building this up so i can give her a lot of pressure but i met her on clubhouse got to know her better she's really funny really interesting person i appeared on her podcast as well uh natasha pearl hansen welcome to the show natasha Hello. how are you thank you so much i'm good i'm good just you know surviving this first winter in nine years uh hold up in wisconsin ah, <laughs> so yeah so i'm good though just you know waiting for the world to waken up just like everybody else there you go aren't we all kind of there <laughs> just kind of <laughs> i feel like i'm there? actually hibernating like i'm <laughs> <laughs> what's the temperature I'm in the winter there? it's the last two weeks it's been like zero zero Mm -hmm. Do you guys don't even register a temperature? It's that damn cold. No temperature. So I think we got up to one degree for a second. And then the last two days, it's been like, I think yesterday it got up to like 35. And we yeah. were like, we, and mm -hmm. my boyfriend went ice skating. It was my I birthday yesterday. Broke so. the bikinis gotten, oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, actually it's kind of funny how much you appreciate low level temps when you've been in zero degrees for a long time. Like I've lived in LA for the last nine years and people get such, such pussies there. Yeah. Like if it's 50 degrees, everybody's like draped in 50 items and just like freezing everywhere and they handle it and they need a heater. And it's just like, now I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know how LA just like shuts down if like one raindrop falls, the whole city just comes just down. Oh my God, there's rain. Ah! Yeah. Oh yeah. Rain or wind will completely take LA out. Like people like on a rainy day, I've been canceled on and for really big meetings where people are like, I'm just not going out in this. I'm like, it's rain. Like you're gonna be okay <laughs> gonna be okay the uh that's funny in wisconsin they have zero degrees it's like the weatherman just say fuck it i'm done i'm not doing any degrees anymore i'm out it's too damn cold yeah kind of i mean that like everything just kind of gives up at that temperature so yeah. but then it's nice because then when things actually because i i lived in chicago before la i grew up here in wisconsin almost five years i've been starting my career and uh the last winter in Chicago was snowmageddon. I think they're actually doing that right now again, where like all the cars are stuck under the snow, but it was like that the year I left. And um, so it makes you, when you live in cold, like that's why people love the seasons because spring, come spring, everybody's like, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do everything. Even if it's like 20 degrees, they're like super jazzed. Yeah, it's kind of like my kids that keep in the cages. Um, you know, when they get let out, they're just so happy. 
to be free, at least for, you know, the dogs, you have to specify that those are dogs that you have, not actual kids. <laughs> oh, well, the, the dogs can't go in the cages because the kids are in them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. People know I don't have kids, but if I did anyway, um, so give people your plugs or people can look you up on the interwebs and find out more about you. Um, so people can go to my website, mphcomedy.com or natashapearlhanson.com. They redirect to the same place. Um, I also have my startup, which we'll talk about soon, which is my breakup registry.com right now. It's just an email collection page, but I'm going to be starting to send out information on that regularly. So you can go to both, sign up for updates on both, get a handle on when I start actually touring again, which is still like giant looming question marks because everybody knows why that's an answer. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so is there something going on right tour. now that uh, what's going on? Then? <laughs> yeah, if you haven't heard, you haven't the world's heard a little yet. weird. This time. <laughs> I feel grateful it's, to anybody who hasn't heard. Like if you're on some island or in space somewhere, they're like, there's a bunch of people that are on a ship and they had it. They're like, what's this? What's going on? Well, we don't there was that. a whole, um, I believe it was the New York Times. It was something really rep reputable or Time Magazine or something. You'll have to look it up. But it was a, there was a guy who went on like a personal sabbatical and went into some like cabin and was just on a, like a retreat off the grid, no social media, right when the pandemic first started. Uh, and he didn't, he came out of it and didn't know about the riots, the protests, the pandemic, like none of it. And I was like, what a, what a, almost like a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. I think there was a guy you know? on a boat too. He, he's like, I'm going to go across the Atlantic. And I, I don't think he had radio. Like when he landed, he's like, what the fuck is yeah. going on? But yeah. Oh that, my God. I thought about going full Ted Kaczynski doing the cabin thing. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. just getting a typewriter somewhere and just disappearing for a year and writing. You know what? Out. I actually, maybe not a year, but since I have this startup that I'm trying to like focus on really heavily, like part of me actually thought about getting an Airbnb for like an entire month somewhere and just like honing in on shit, you know, because sometimes yeah. I think it is nice to, to kind of lock everything out, but also <laughs> we're doing that anyway. So it's like, yeah. you're kind of just locking it out no matter where you go. <laughs> yeah. So my kids yeah. do that too. I have them, uh, they're, they're always, they're locked out right now. So they're always banging on the door, but it's warm in the garage. They're going to be fun. They're not outdoors, <laughs> so they're not. Always a callback. Um, always. So uh, Natasha, as long as we're on the topic of your uh, startup, let's, uh, let's hit that first. How's that sound? Sure. So um, it kind of, it all started when I I was in a long relationship that was coming to a close. It was like a slow close over a long time. I'm sure people have been there. It's like, yeah. can be really tough to get out of something, you know? And so, yeah. um, a big reason why it took a long time, I gotta say is because of tied personal finances. It wasn't like we were completely tied up, but we, we had been together for almost a decade. And so like, you know, when you have two incomes or joint household income, um, it helps with a lot of things. You know, you have two creatives. It helps al allow for flexibility for like travel and to work on projects or invest in projects. And so certain things like that really keep people stuck in situations that they need to be getting out of. So um, in late, uh, late summer 2019, um, I was my, it was supposed to be my wedding day. And it was canceled. It was actually canceled for like the third time, technically. So who's um, canceling it? I got to ask that. We got well, I had postponed it mm. twice. And then by the time it came around, it, it, we were trying to buy time to like work things out and it just didn't uh. happen. And so then it finally was canceled. And I was like, well, I'm ha I have this contract. So um I decided to shoot my first comedy special at that stage. It's called, I was supposed to get married today and it's going to be coming out soon. We're going to, awesome. <laughs> we're going to be getting a launch I date. Love soon. That. Yeah. So it's, it's a, uh, were you in a bride's dress too? while you shot it. Sorry to interrupt you. I actually was in a white jumpsuit. That was, I planned. I'm very unconventional when it comes to stuff. Like even when I was planning the wedding, I wanted to do everything unconventionally. I didn't want to like, you know, I'm kind of like a bro when it comes to that stuff. I wasn't like, I'd get so pissed when people would call me and be like, we want to make you feel like a princess on this day. And I was like, I'm not a, I'm not a princess. <laughs> I'm not a pretty, problem. pretty princess. I'm a little more rugged problem. than that. 
Yeah, <laughs> so, I have the same problem. People call me all the time. They go, we want to make you a princess. I'm like, but I already am. Anyway. Well, and I talk about that, you know, I touch on that in my special. I, I really wrote a lot of things specifically for that day. So it was really interesting because the special was done in one take. There was no obvious repeats or anything. It was my wedding like guest list that was there. And then, um, yeah. And so I wrote a lot of things specifically for that day. So anyway, shot the special. Um, and then a couple months later, me and my fiance officially broke up. And so had I had been thinking about how challenging it is for people to leave situations because of finances. And so I created my breakup registry.com. Um, I started working on it over a year ago now, but uh, it's a crowdfunding and registry platform for people going through breakups. And it also has a community element where people can help one another, either share their breakup story or share advice or resources or whatever that may be. So um, it's been a lot of work to build. Um, You know, I took most of the summer just like teaching myself how to build a company properly with like the right kind of morals and values and being mentored by certain people that I love and, um, and, uh, finalizing the LLC and setting up all the accounts and getting everything solidified, you know, legally. And then now it's getting ready to be launched. I'm just like finishing the product build. That's the biggest pain in the ass ever. If you're not a technical person, like I don't code, so I have to have other Are people you do that shit for or... me. No, I'm getting the product built outsourced, but I'm, still kind of on the hunt. I'm going to be doing this thing called building in public with it. So that's why I'm going to start email emails going out soon and like tweets and all that stuff. Um, Cause I want to kind of pull my audience for the proper person to be like either a technical co-founder or a CTO for my company, like somebody that would work really well hand in hand with me. So that's really what I think I'm looking for. Um, but there's so many different ways to go about the, tech side. So it's kind of hard to know what to do. You just, just like any entrepreneur I talk to or any founder, like nobody knows what the fuck they're doing until they made a mistake. (laughs) And then they're able to be like, that was not what to do, but they like, nobody knows what they're doing. Like every, every story is so different. So here's my story. That's awesome. (laughs) Figuring out as I go. So basically (laughs) I think I heard you talk about this in clubhouse. Now this is, this is coming back to me. Um, And, and so basically, you know, when you break up, you know, you've got to maybe leave that toaster behind with X, Y, Z. And, uh, so you need a toaster, right? And you need a bed. That's usually a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, some silverware, some glasses, you know, (laughs) and depending upon how Uh the breakup goes, you know, it, one person might get the stuff. I remember going through that where you're like fighting over the fucking, um, you know, it's like that, uh, uh, when Harry when Harry met Sally thing where they're fighting yeah. the fucking uh, uh, wheel table or whatever it was remember that scene yeah I remember, I remember when Harry yeah. Harry Harry flips out and he's like someday you're gonna be fighting over that fucking piece of shit table and uh, yeah so uh, there's that 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 fun stuff but yeah I mean yeah. Uh, I've been through that starting over phase and uh, um, yeah. It's crazy. And so you, you need stuff like usually, usually when I just need gifted from a breakup is another girlfriend. <laughs> Can I put up a thing? Yeah. For that? Like basically. yeah the, the right. I mean, and that's also why I want to have partners like with dating apps and stuff. Good, good ones. Not like the, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, I have my eye on certain collaborations with other companies that I think are really doing things well. Um, because yeah, I mean, I think a lot of times people are just looking for a connection, even if it's not somebody to date after they get out of a situation, they even just want to go like have casual dinner and feel like nice for a couple hours. And like, that's a thing too. Um, you know, so there's a lot of ideas I have down the road. Um, but just like with anything, you have to start with your like, minimum viable product and then build out from there, you know, where I plan to have this in a couple of years is much different than where it's going to start. Um, but really kind of like, what I say it is, is the antithesis of like a honey fund or a Zola, which are like yeah. wedding registries. Um, it'll be built a lot, to, like really similarly, but for the opposite thing. <laughs> yeah. You got a marriage registry. Yeah. You got a breakup registry. I love yeah, it. Exactly. I love it. Maybe you can and, have and the just, yeah. divorce court fund some of them or something. I don't know. 
Yeah, there there is one divorce registry, but it's not very popular. I'm I'm building this to be really fun and like have an attitude and like an air of positivity. And so mm. it's it's gonna feel really shareable. You know, it's like mm. the opposite of the pretty pretty princess type of thing. Like the wedding registries are all like, look at us, we're so happy, everything's sparkly, fuck, fuck, fuck. And like, <laughs> you know, this is gonna be like more like, dude, doesn't this shit suck? You're gonna be fine though, you know, yeah. like <laughs> I like that, man. Yeah. Hey, I need Reality. a I need a new toaster. I need a new convection oven, you know. And uh, yeah. there's always stuff you need when you break up because you know one person gets one thing. Uh, sometimes <laughs> sometimes they fight over the dogs and cats. Like I get the dog, and you're like, eh, no, you don't. Uh, so <laughs> you know you can figure all that thing out. Um, the uh, I love this idea. And what's what's do you have a name for this uh, startup yet? Yeah, it's mybreakupregistry.com. Okay, so my break at registry come. You own the thing. So, wow, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people can go there now. I actually own a number of like other um it was gonna have like a different name before and it was a dumb name. So I'm glad I changed it. That's what's nice about having time. Like, you know, it's like people have kids and they name them dumb things and then and yeah. nine months later they're like, Oh, why didn't I name my kid that stupid? I just put well, my kids up for adoption because it was too much paperwork to <laughs> <laughs> to uh, change their names it was like 10 right, right. Or something I had to pay. and some yeah. paperwork and i'm just like you know i'm just gonna, I'm just gonna send you off the <laughs> well, and organ harvesting company <laughs> that's what's nice about sitting on a company for a while to actually like think it through and be like is this what i want it to be called how is this gonna yeah. is this gonna give all the information like i like things that i create to give people all the information that they need my podcast is called future role model there's not a lot of questions there right um the comedy special is called i was supposed to get married today like try to ask some questions about that yeah you know (laughs) know uh, what what, what are you gonna do about people like me because this sounds like a great way to get a bunch of free shit from your friends and stuff and people on the registry Mm -hmm. like i might just get in relationships and break up just to get some free shit and just keep doing it like man i might have been using the system that's the beautiful thing that's the beautiful thing about this you can't really abuse the system that's created for your own personal community because your friends will start telling you to go uh, fuck yourself. Yeah. And I like that about it. You know, like, like after round three breakup, your friends are just going to be like, sorry, you can't figure your shit out. Here's some therapy. <laughs> like maybe get better. Maybe that's first. what, that's what you can you put know? in the registry so, some therapy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there is elements to that too. And like, you know, um, fitness and stuff like that. So um, that's the nice thing about something like this is like, the same reason I did a lot of research last year, like a lot of research on relationships on the, the way that relationships and breakups are increasing or the, uh, the breakups are increasing because of COVID because people are just like sick of being around each other. Um, yeah. There's going to be a lot coming up. <laughs> the, the way people are looking at relationships and like Gen Z is just very different than the way that our parents did. And so um, people are sick of supporting people's weddings because people get married a lot of times too. There's yeah. people I know that have been married twice already and I'm, you know, I'm in my mid thirties. And so it's like, you know, so people get sick of supporting the same people over and over again. And with weddings, you're just expected to, you obviously, um, people had thought about doing singles registries, but that's kind of stupid. Cause like some people are just perpetually single. And then with a breakup registry, your, your, your friends are going to regulate themselves. Like if yeah. eventually like if you go through that many breakups and you want to register for things that many times over and over again, you're going to need to keep getting new friends. And <laughs> that's going to be exhausting. <laughs> what if I break up with my, my phone, my Samsung, I'm like, I'm getting a new phone. I got to break up with my relationship with my phone. Is that, is that counting? Well, and the thing is, I hope people get creative with it. Like I hope people have other things that they're like breaking up with, like their job. And then like you can get support from their friends with that too. Like, I hope people get creative with the registry and like want to use it for other things besides just relationships. So, yeah, I think it's a great, it's perfect time because everyone keeps telling me like all my, all my friends who have been married for a long time, their wives are telling me there's going to be a lot of divorces when the shit gets over, man. It's just like Mm -hmm. a landslide of people breaking up and uh, they've had enough with each other. It's kind of funny. They've, I guess they were always, well, many of them were always running on relationships that they just didn't ever spend enough time together to learn to hate that other person. And now they have, and they're like, yeah. wait, I married you. I've been with you for 10 years. And I didn't realize that you were a complete pain in the ass to live with. 
There's a lot of things that people don't even know about themselves until they have to spend close quartered time with other people. Yeah. And that's something I can stay. I can, I could talk about that for a while as well. Like, you know, me and my boyfriend, we started a relationship right before winter in the middle of COVID. Like that's like double hold up. And I have learned quite a bit of things about myself that aren't that pleasant, honestly, in that amount of time. Um, I would have never like all summer when I was just by myself in LA in this, you know, really beautiful home in the Hills, like running every day. Like I was getting over the breakup every day was doing really, really well, like being alone, but having to be with somebody else is a whole nother story. Like you don't learn about yourself insanely when you're just by yourself, you have to have like outer influences to realize like, am, am I like that? Do I think like that? What the fuck? You know, (laughs) so it's like, it's been this like chunks of eye-opening periods of time over the last year while I'm just living out of suitcases, like starting this business. It's been like, damn, what the fuck? (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) You know, that should be another app you should be working on. What the fuck? Yeah. Damn. What the fuck? Relationships. What the fuck? The next special from Natasha. (laughs) I think there is something like that out. I Probably. feel like that's a podcast relationships. What the fuck? We should, should shut up. I, I should be doing that run podcast. Maybe I can sue because I say that all the time. What the fuck? Um, especially yeah. in the last five years. I, I said that every morning when I wake up. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be like, what the fuck? Um, so um, uh, you want to talk a little bit more about the special? I think the special is a brilliant idea. I mean, what a great backstory. You're supposed to, you know, have your wedding there, saying your vow. Yeah. Did you hold yeah, it the, as a stage? The special was an interesting thing because I had, like I said, already pushed my venue date two times. Essentially, first we had a wedding date in place, and then we waited like six months later to actually reschedule it with our like close friends. And then when that was coming up, I rescheduled it a year later with the venue. So it was three different dates we had to reschedule with like our people. Right. So by then I think everybody was losing faith that it would ever happen, which is good. Cause I think they were loosely saving the date and that was absolutely the case. Um, but when um, it was spring of 2019 that I knew that like, it wasn't, I knew in my heart that I was with somebody that like, not a really nice guy. We'd known each other forever. We met when we were 22, like, you know, but it wasn't the right fit for me for a long-term partner and what I, what I wanted and the way I like to live and um, the way I like to create with somebody. There's a lot of things that I like to do. Like a I'm a very collaborative person. And so I like that in a partnership and relationship too. Whatever that means, like I want to feel like we're collaborating, whether it's on life or like ideas or just having good conversations. Like there were just things that were missing from my relationship. And so I started having the idea in the spring. And in April of 2019, me and one of my girlfriends, Rachel O'Brien, she's an amazing comic as well. We produced our own co headlining tour through Europe and went to six countries. Uh, or maybe it was five. Um, but we, we crushed it. We did a really good job and we like sold pretty well. We picked small venues, you know, knowing that it would be tough to sell, but we like sold them well. So at least we picked like smart, you know, and it was just a really eye opening experience. And I remember being on that trip and thinking, you know, if, if I was in a relationship with somebody and they were going to be overseas for three and a half weeks. Like I would make it a point to try and meet up with them on a part of that or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was having a lot of thoughts during that time. It was just me and Rachel the whole time. And we were like, you know, I got out of that and was like, hmm, it's now May, early May. Our wedding was scheduled for June. Oh, wow. It was June 15th. And we got back from Europe on like May 3rd or 4th. And it was like the day I landed that I was like, well, I got to do something with this venue and I got to think of what to do fast because I'm going to owe them a bunch of money. Otherwise, I think it was like, like it was either like nine grand or 15 grand or something that I owed remaining, depending on what the deposit was. And so actually 
this is what's kind of funny. So before that, like a couple of months before that, I remember, so my now boyfriend, he's a comedian, Jake Snell. And uh, I had run into him in, in Madison at one of the big comedy clubs here and was like, joking with him that like, Hey, I'm going to be getting married, like in a number of months or whatever. Like I kind of want to do like a, a roast. You, you should come and roast people at my wedding. <laughs> so that, wedding roast. I love it. Yeah. I wanted to do that like regardless. And then, um, I, and then lo and behold, he ends up hosting my comedy special on my oh, wow. canceled wedding day. So like nothing had transpired between us at that point, but like, you know, we had like a number of run-ins with each other. And um, so, yeah, from May 4 until June 15, like, I think it was by May 15, I had some press out and was selling tickets and I was selling like VIP tickets for the dinner. Like it was a tough day <laughs> awesome. because I, I had to host, like we were filming, right? So I was like mm-hmm. co-executive producing with my director. I decorated the whole venue with my family, me, mom, dad, and grandma. Um, decorated the night before I had to be there during the day to like prep for filming and get some like pickup shots and the pre shots. Then I had to host a party. The IP people started two hours out with them and out with them. then like the when I went and hid for a bit and then I had to come down and perform for an hour in front of like my workers and my cousins and like and then through like an after party it was like an exhausting day, both mentally and emotionally. Like it was, it was tough. Um, and then, yeah, I think we were shooting until like fucking midnight. Wow. So it was all day and it was just one take. So you can't like, we had to do a couple resets, but the crowd was really cool about it because, you know, obviously I had like cues I was watching from the director. If something didn't get shot right, I had to like address the crowd and like take it back. And like, you know, you just have to like handle that stuff. So <laughs> It was definitely a challenge, like so on so many levels. And, um, but yeah. And also, what was awesome is that my boyfriend, um, at that time, obviously we weren't dating, but he had worked with this venue a lot. So he gave me some pointers on how to renegotiate with the venue and do like a bar draw. So he ended up saving me thousands of dollars off of my, off of my bill for the space for the venue. So, um, so what's a bar jar? Is that where you pass around the thing or something? Draw, draw. Bar so draw. like, okay. So whatever I owed for the venue, mm-hmm. whatever the bar made, they subtracted from that. Oh, so, that's pretty smart. So, and I wouldn't have even thought to do that. And so he suggested I do that and like saved me, I don't know, probably somewhere between 25 and 2,500 and $4,000, depending on what it came out to. Cause everything was taxed, you know? So, yeah. but it was, um, yeah. So then that was in June of 2019. And then June of 2020, I was here in Wisconsin and him and I went for one drink and then kind of kept talking after that. And then when I got back here in November, we started dating. So it's kind of like a long drawn out, cool, like, you know, it's fun to actually think back on the trajectory of how you meet somebody special, you know, that's pretty awesome how things turn out. So when does this special come forth? Um, we should have an air date really soon. Like we solidified the deal with the distributor in be, like right at the beginning of March of 2020. And then obviously everything hit kind of good in a way, because originally we would have been airing probably sometime in June and there's no fucking way in the world with everything that was happening in this country that I would have felt comfortable promoting my own shit and be like, Oh, my wedding day <laughs> with like some real shit happening that yeah. needed attention. Yeah. So, you know, in hindsight, sometimes you're grateful for things taking a lot longer than they were supposed to. Now is just a much better time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, so we just finished like copyrights and, um, all the legality paperwork is just endless paperwork in end of January. So everything should be we should have an air date in the next couple of weeks, I would think. Nice. Is there a website yeah. you have set up for it yet? Or do they just want to go to your website? No, no, no. Because it's not going to be, it's going to be on an actual platform. Okay. We just don't know which one yet. So it's, it's not okay. going to be on my website. It's going to be distributed on like 
some real shit. <laughs> cool. So if they yeah. go to the website, they can get news, your website, they can go to news updates and, and be uh, abreast. Yeah. Oh, it. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when that's ready to come out too, there'll be tons of press because it's linked to the launch of my startup as well. So I want them to coincide since the stories are like so interconnected. So um, I'm getting like PR and stuff ready for as soon as I have the air date to work back. Yeah, that's where we're at. Just awesome. the waiting game, the good old good old Hollywood waiting game, that hurry up and wait shit that we've well, all dealt with our whole career. <laughs> so there's been lots of great media that's uh, sometimes better, you know, in the can, lets it, uh, mm -hmm. lets it uh, kind of, I don't know what you call it, ferment or, or, you know, yeah. just some things marinate. are better in the can. Let you know, marinate. I mean, right now it's such a crisis and ugly thing going on. You can't, you know, it's not, a, mm -hmm. it's not the most funniest time right now, but uh, which yeah. is funny. So how, what led you to become a professional comedian? What, what took you down that road? Well, I mean, it's actually funny because the other night with my family, we had like pulled out all these like drawings and aspirational things I made in like first and second grade. And I like wanted to go to Hollywood and be a director. Like I've always really liked telling stories. I used to do it written you know, mm -hmm. I used to write as much as I possibly could. I kind of became known in my high school um, for what was called Natasha's Books of Thoughts. So it was like dumb kind of one liner like not as good as Mitch Hedberg kind of jokes, but kind of stonery, almost like that, like quick, mm -hmm. quippy things that you could read to friends. Mm -hmm. So I had all these notebooks I would carry around and I would read them at parties and like older kids liked me and invited me to parties because I like had these funny things. And so um, it was kind of a bug that was in me early on. I just hadn't, I just hadn't considered it as a real option for a job. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it's <laughs> cool. Then, You're um, kind of performing at a young age. Yeah. You're writing at a young in, age, maybe. Exactly. And I was in college for pre-med. So I was taking, I was taking a pretty heavy workload and, um, but my minor was in theater so I was trying to like balance it with something that I knew I just wanted to do. I didn't really want to tell my friends that I was taking a minor in theater because I didn't, I didn't want anybody like make fun of me or anything. So I just kind of did it on my own. <laughs> um, <laughs> but one, this was actually, there was a lot of, you know, just like with anything, there were a lot of different signs or a lot of different moments that kind of led me to like not going down this one path and to kind of feeling like the other path was going to be the choice. But um so I think my answer to this varies depending on who I'm talking to and what seems more poignant. But um, my uh, there was one day in one of my Shakespeare classes, it was like Shakespearean literature 101 or something. And it was like this huge lecture hall. And I had done a piece on Midsummer Night's Dream, which I love because it's, you know, humorous. And we were supposed to write a speech about our take on our thesis and they were doing sections in the lecture hall by last name. And the day I got there, it was the H's and I didn't, I didn't prepare mine. So I like ended up ad-libbing the entire thing. Luckily I had written a really good thesis. So my ad-lib was like really good, but because I was not reading off of something, I performed it really nicely. And it was like maybe only eight minutes in front of the lecture hall. And my teacher came up to me after and was like, you didn't prepare anything to you. And I was like, no. <laughs> and she was like, that was really good. Like you should do improv. And I actually had never heard of improv. So I went back to my dorm room and typed in the Google task before it was even like called Googling something. And I just looked up improv and um, started reading down this rabbit hole of Second City, Chicago. Yeah. So Second it was, City. it was that summer that I decided to check out Second City. And then I left school and then I drove to, I worked at an Applebee's in Madison and I drove to Chicago every Sunday for class and drove back at night. Or as I made improv friends, sometimes I'd sleep on their couch if we were like drinking after class. And I did that for like four months or five months until I saved up enough Applebee's money to move to Chicago. <laughs> And then I moved and slept on an air mattress for a while. And that was, that's what I did. There you go. So how long have you been doing a professional comedy? Comedy it's, I mean, it's been 15 years since wow. I started the truck at second city. Wow. Um, 
And I always remember one of my earlier directors, he told me up front, because I was like, just turned 21 when I started um, one of the bigger programs there. And I was the youngest in my class. And he was like, you're really good. Like you're going to do really well, but just want you to know this career is going to take you 15 years. So grow a pair and buck up. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. It was honestly one of the coolest things somebody ever said to me because um, anytime something good would happen in my career or something was giving me like some notoriety, I would be like, all right, this is just a piece of the stepping stone to this like larger story that you're creating. So this is year 15. So I was like, cool, this is the perfect year to be releasing my special. Like maybe that actually means that like, cool, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, you know? There you go. There you go. Um, So (laughs) this is awesome. You've got the uh, startup launching. You've got the, uh, and I love the premise of the startup. I also love the premise of the special. So you've got the special going on. You're hitting your 15th year and, and uh, hopefully uh, they've been saying that we might have uh, everyone inoculated or vaccinated or, or just uh, whatever mm-hmm. by July or June. So you you probably could just come shooting right out of the gate there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'll be awesome. And that's be- the goal is that, you know, that's the hope is that since we've had like kind of a bummer of a year as far as live performance, we've all had to get super creative. <laughs> so like now that, now that the special is going to be coming out at this time, hopefully that'll be a nice, like you said, launching pad into like, retouring again I have a really good management team and um so they're working with me on like getting a right getting a plan in place and you know so we have a lot of cool goals for this year and next year so I think it's just the I think it's the right timing for things sometimes things just work out as they should (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of weird how life sometimes uh, comes around that way. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I got to tell you, everyone's going to be getting out of their house. They're going to be going to comedy clubs. They're going to be going to different events and stuff. I, I plan yeah. on when everything's over, I'm leaving my house. I'm not coming back for like, I don't know, half a year. I'm just like, I'm just going to be out everywhere. Like just traveling. Yeah, just be malls, mm-hmm. just go to the mall like all day just stupid shit, you know, just, just being out. <laughs> I know. I'm just going to go up to strange people, rub love... my face up against them and just be like, ah, oh, we can't give <laughs> each other COVID anymore. Uh, I'll just be like hugging right? people at malls and shit. And that's like, such hug. a thing. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not like a touchy, like there, um, how do I word this? Like, I'm not a touchy person. Like there's touchy people. And I think those people creep a lot of people out. I'm a very like naturally affectionate person though. So I love to hug people and yeah. without being able to hug people for the last year, like it's really affect, yeah. it's really affecting me. Maybe, maybe there are people that hate being touched and they're like, yes. But for me, I'm like, God, I just miss just fucking hugging people, dude. Yeah, shaking hands. Like, <laughs> or, you know, yeah. I mean, like it's... greeting people or making them feel like embraced, you know? Yeah. I saw those people on the internet where they make like a, plastic sheet and they have like the holes that go through so you can hug your grandpa and stuff and not give him COVID. <laughs> but yeah after when when all this is over man i'm just gonna be running around just being like hey do you want to make out i i don't i'm not attracted <laughs> to you but i just I, we can do that now <laughs> i'll look your face or something just uh, i'll go to the mall more, just look at the glass stuff like that more than anything i want to go back to europe like oh it's already yeah. been almost two years since i was there and like i I love incorporating comedy into everything I do. It's usually been a good catalyst to be able to travel all the places I want to. Like in 2019, I was really lucky to perform in Spain, France, Italy, the UK, you know, like London, um, Edinburgh, all that stuff. Um, Prague, Germany. Like I got to hit a lot of really cool places. Thank God before the world shut down. Cause it yeah. like, at least felt like I bought myself some time, but like, I really want to go spend some time in like some of the overseas markets and like perform in like Paris again. And like just places that challenge you as a writer and as a comedian, like I, I would love to do that. Like, you know, just uh, when it comes to markets, stay out of the Wuhan uh, uh, wet markets. (laughs) (laughs) The uh, throw a Chinese joke in there just for the Chinese uh, segment of my audience. Um, No, this is, this is awesome. I I mean, it's going to be fun. Like I'm just going to be like, uh, I want to just eat at restaurants and just sit there in the restaurant, like for hours 
Mm -hmm. and just like i don't have to worry about covid and you're just you know what's nice too is it'll probably take me a while but you know anytime these days anytime you're in the store or something somebody starts coughing you're like (laughs) you're like holy crap get me out of here and um so yeah it's nice to not have to be throw a fit every time someone someone uh coughs near you and stuff yeah and hopefully people just will learn to less, be less gross like yeah that's probably true too I if anything has taught pants us about the mask good. thing yeah. you know people have people are much grosser than like than we realized until the mask thing came into play like <laughs> You know, now that people have to sneeze into their own faces, they're starting to become a little bit more aware of how like vile that can be. <laughs> like, yeah. like I might just keep wearing the mask. I kind of like the right? mask. Right? Yeah. Hopefully, kind of we'll zero-ish. just end up in a like a more you know conscientious society yeah. as far as not spreading our shit to people because yeah. you know that's the thing. The I might just keep wearing the mask because people think I still have something. They'll be like, "What's going on with you, man?" I'm like, just don't get <laughs> fucking near me. Just stay away. I don't need you near me. The mask has been handy for winter here. It actually has yeah. like been great to wear one. It's like it keeps your face warm. We were ice skating yesterday and like my face was sweating and I was like, hmm, this thing actually does something. There you go. The, uh, I, you know, the, the one thing is, is uh, <laughs> I had a joke cued and it lost it. Just went, woohoo. Uh, the nice thing about the mask fuck it the queue won't come anyway it was wonderful to have you on natasha uh yeah and thank you so much things give us your plugs so people can uh go google you on the interwebs and find out more about you yeah so website is nphcomedy.com it stands for natasha pearl hansen but you'll remember that easily by neil patrick harris i share his um share his uh same initials um so nph comedy on all socials that's on twitter instagram fucking pinterest i don't know what you guys do but it's on all of it. um tiktok be. my tiktok is terrible please don't go just go and judge me on it it's, da- it's bad <laughs> i need to redo it um and then obviously on clubhouse i'm also nph comedy um i need to go on there more but it's just like so flooded right now that i just get overwhelmed a little bit um and then my startup is mybreakupregistry.com. So you can go there and just subscribe to the um, movement, as I call it, which is the breakup movement. And you can start getting updates as soon as I start putting them out and follow the entire journey of me creating this startup in public because that's what I'm going to be doing. There you go. I had a breakup movement. It was leaving my shit behind. Oh, anyway, uh, the, um, uh, I did remember the joke, though. The joke was the problem with the coronavirus thing is is no one's gonna have like excuses for anything like anymore. Like you know, if if somebody calls you and like, hey, you want to come over for that barbecue and you don't want to come over, you can't be like, ah, I got the corona right now, I can't. Or you, you know, your boss calls you and like, why don't you show up for work? You're like, ah, I got the corona. Your you know your wife calls you and like, why are there panties in her bed from some other woman? And you're like, ah, I got uh, the corona. You know, that's uh, mm-hmm. you're gonna lose that excuse. So it's not exactly. Work all right well this was so much fun thank you for having me thank you for coming thanks natasha thanks manish for tuning in be sure to check natasha out in our future special and everything she's been working on go to youtube.com for chris foss hit the bell notification go to your goodreads.com for chris foss you of course find the chris foss show on facebook linkedin instagram and all that good stuff and of course follow us on clubhouse thanks manish for tuning in stay safe wear your mask and we'll see you next time thank you so much